identifying the energy gap of a material of a p-n junction diode. Now here p-n junction diode is a semiconductor device. So we have a p-n junction diode here. The red color one is a positive of the diode and the black is a negative of the diode. So here I have a diode and also a heating filament here. We place this heating element and the diode in a calorie meter. Now after placing it, fix it. So basically let us understand what is energy gap. Now energy gap is nothing but the amount of energy required for the valence electrons to move to conduction band. So this difference of energies is identified with this experiment. So let us understand how to identify this valence band and conduction band. In the diagram here you can see this is, this is these diagrams are called as energy level diagrams. So this is a valence band. Valence band is a last shell of or of any atom, right? So if it is a single atom, it is called as valence shell. If it is group of all the shells, it is called as a valence band. So valence band uh, is the last final band in any atom, atomic structure, where the electrons, once they leave valence band, they move to conduction band. Now what is conduction band? Conduction band is a free area around the valence band or anon, around any atom, wherein the electrons can move freely and this free moving electrons are the cause for the conduction in any material. Now if you look at this, we have three different energy level diagrams here because we know there are two types of I mean, semiconductors basically. So one is called as intrinsic semiconductor, the other is called as extrinsic semiconductor. Intrinsic semiconductors are also called as pure semiconductors and they are directly from the fourth group elements. Now the other is called as extrinsic semiconductor wherein again you have two types in it, P type and N type semiconductors. So in P type, we have a deficiency of electrons as P type is nothing but it's a, a third group element doped with the fourth group element. So you have a deficiency of electrons. And for N type materials, the fifth group elements are doped with the fourth group elements. So we have an excess of electrons. So excess of electrons, so excess of negative charge, so it is called as N type. And here deficiency of negative charge, so it is called as positive type. So if you look at this, there is a level called as a Fermi level in between any of the energy diagrams what you see here. Now what is this Fermi level? Fermi level is the minimum amount of energy required for the electrons to move from valence band to conduction band. So once this energy is crossed, that is if this energy is attained by the electron, only then it will move into the next higher levels that is called as conduction level or conduction band. So here you see the Fermi level is exactly between the valence band and conduction band in case of pure semiconductors that is uh, intrinsic semiconductors and when it comes to the other two diagrams what you see here, now here this is called as Fermi level which is close to conduction band in case of p-type materials. Why? Because the electrons in the valence band are much lesser and they need lot of energy to cross the Fermi level and move to the conduction band. So we say that the Fermi level is much far away from the valence band. Now when it comes to the n-type materials, the valence band has excess of electrons. Now with a small energy given to them, they can easily move to the conduction band. So we say that the Fermi level is much closer to the valence band. So this is the energy level diagram what we have understood. Now let us understand what is the gap between them. It is not a physical gap here, it is to understand that this is energy difference between the bands. So energy of valence band and this is when the amount of energy required for the electrons to move from valence band to conduction band, crossing this Fermi level. Now for this we cannot directly find with the semiconducting material, so we take a semiconductor device. So here is a diode. Now you can look at the circuit here. This is a circuit diagram what we have. So I have a diode here and this diode is placed in the calorie meter. Just now we have seen here that it is placed in the calorie meter. Let us see it again. So this is a diode which is placed in the calorie meter. Now once this diode is placed in the calorie meter, it is given with the reverse bias connection. Now what do we mean by a reverse bias connection is, now for the diode to work, we connect it with the biasing in such a way that in this case to identify what is the energy gap between the 
valence and conduction band we find we place this in the reverse bias condition that is the diode positive is connected to the negative of the battery then a positive of the battery is connected to the microammeter and from microammeter it is connected back to the diode negative now why microammeter because diode is connected in a reverse bias condition we have a very small amount of current flows in the diode that is because of the minority charge carriers so you can see here once we have fixed this diode in the calorie meter now the current which flows in the reverse bias is very small that is in microamperes but with the very small current we won't be able to identify what is the energy gap so what do we do is we heat the diode now we cannot directly heat the diode so what do we do we heat the atmosphere around the diode such that the heat transfers to the diode so for this we have a heating of coil also placed inside so let us connect it to the circuit here now we can see the circuit here this is a diode connection voltmeter connection and this is the ammeter that is i have a circuit here and i have the devices also here so first let me connect the heating element that is the coil so the heating element that is the coil is connected now let us connect the circuit now as per the diagram we have seen that the diode should be connected in a reverse bias connection now this is diode positive and this is diode negative so diode positive is connected to the voltmeter negative from voltmeter it is connected to ammeter positive and from ammeter negative it is connected back to diode negative so this is a simple connection with only three connections here now once you see this will after the circuit is connected see that the voltmeter shows your reading as 1.5 ohms so let me fix the voltage as 1.5 ohms now switch on the heater this is a switch for the heater now once before i switch on the heater you can see the current here is only 12 to 13 microamperes a very 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 small current now to increase the amount of current we switch on the heater but before that let us check what is the temperature today now today's room temperature is about 23 degrees so place this thermometer inside so that i can identify what is the temperature inside the calorie meter now you can observe that the temperature is raising now the temperature has come to 35 degrees so it is slowly raising once the thermometer shows you 70 degrees stop the heater you can identify that the temperature is 60 degrees now so let it uh, let us wait until it comes to 70 yes it is 70 now so switch off the heater now identify what is the value of the current so it is 516 microamperes now you will observe that as the temperature decreases the current value also decreases so we have a tabular column here to note down the temperature and the current so let us understand the temperature value is first taken in degrees then later converted into kelvin and find 1 by t value of it so for we stopped at 70 degrees but you can observe that the temperature raised up to 80 degrees that is because the atmosphere inside is still hot so once it reaches 80 degrees note down what is the value of your microammeter reading as the current here then convert this temperature into kelvin that is this is in degrees so note convert it into kelvin and find 1 by t value of it meanwhile as the temperature drops for every 5 degrees drop of temperature similarly note down what is the amount of current seen on the screen now once you have this current value take the natural logarithm that is ln of this current that is i so these are the values of log i s for different temperatures what we have noted earlier so these temperatures and current values will plot a graph for them so taking 1 by t on x axis and 
current that is log is value that is uh, natural logarithm of current on the y axis now you can see that this is a negative scale that is as temperature increases current should increase but this is 1 by t value so as 1 by t value increases the current drops the curve actually is this way right so that means we have a curve seen this way originally so take the tan of the curve that is take the number of points which are matching on the line so that you can draw a straight line and find the slope from this the slope value is noted and the formula for finding out the energy gap is 2 times of kb where kb is the boltzmann constant slope the slope value what we have noted from the earlier graph by 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 90 this is because the value what you get here is in joules to convert into electron volts we divide by 1.6 in 10 to the power of minus 19 so you get the value in electron volts so what is that the kb value is a constant that is 1.38 into 10 to the power of minus 23 into the slope value what we have found from the graph earlier so this slope value will substitute here this value would be in joules to convert them into electron volts so we could see that the value of the energy gap is found to be around 0.7 this 0.7 indicates that this is a germanium type if the value was around 1 or 1.1 then we would find that the value the diode is a silicon diode so the diode what we have taken is a germanium diode so this is all about your pn junction diode experiment wherein you can find the energy gap of a pn junction diode using a diode connecting in a reverse bias 